will slightly explain the breakout groups that we have. For the next 30 minutes, we are going to split into four groups and discuss in depth on four topics that have been identified by the organizers. The idea for the breakout sessions is to allow all of us to reflect on and share our insights on constraints that might be limiting adoption of improved storage in India and Bangladesh, as well as to capitalize on the diverse participants uh, that we have in this group and discuss tangible interventions for scale up of these technologies. The four breakout sessions are divided on four topics. The first group will be discussing issues with on-farm storage. This will be led by Dr. M.D. Monjurul Alam. Can I please ask you to stand so that the audience can identify you? This group will be sitting on that corner of this room, so all the participants who wish to engage on the topic of on-farm storage could please join him in that section. The second topic for discussion is public grains distribution. This will be led by Dr. Avinash Kishore, who is outside the hall. I'll ask him to introduce himself. So this group will be sitting in this corner of the room, um, and all the participants who wish to engage on this topic can please join uh, Dr. Kishore here. The third topic for discussion is private market systems. This will be led by Dr. Kathy Bayliss. So anyone who wants to join that group. This group will be sitting um, in committee room one, which is on the ground floor where we had lunch. Our uh, colleagues will point you towards the direction of the room. And similarly, the fourth group will be discussing issues on public-private partnerships, including farmer cooperatives and it will be led by Ms. Maria Jones of ADMI. So all those who wish to discuss on this topic may please join the fourth group. We will, um, in this uh, session, we wish all the uh, discussions, we, we, wish, we want the facilitators from all the breakout groups to report back to the house on the deliberations that their group has undertaken, um, followed by remarks. So for this session, may I invite the chairpersons, Dr. T. Nanda Kumar and Dr. Shahidur Rashid, and all the facilitators as well, Dr. Alam, Dr. Avinash Kishore, Dr. Kethi, and Maria. Can I please have all of you on stage? All of the facilitators will have about three minutes to report back on the deliberations in your group. Thank you all and I hand over to Dr. Tina Kumar to undertake the session now. Uh, thank you. There have been intense discussions in some of these panels, but uh, as, as my time doesn't permit a long discussion on any of the reports, so it's three minutes for each team leader. I know it's difficult, but then if you have capsules, it's easy to swallow them. So, about five capsules each in three minutes, I think would be a good idea. But just uh, one or two small opening uh, statements. I think we have heard most of the problems in the earlier sessions. Uh, we are actually looking at solutions. Uh, solutions could be in the form of policy changes, managerial practices, technology adoption, uh, any of those areas <coughs> and um, some would be large policy changes which will be difficult but all the same I won't prevent them being listed. Some could be small changes which can then lead to a larger chain reaction. Uh, that would be my request to you and uh, after three minutes I still have I think half an hour for the whole session. Yes. Yeah, so I still have some space for you to raise a question or two. Uh, and seek some answers so so that even if we don't have a way forward as we envisaged, at least we know which way we steps to take. Okay, we start with uh, Dr. Monjurul Alam. Your three minutes. Yeah, honorable chair. Uh, we have 30 participants in our group on all college students. So uh, before uh, going through the in-depth of this analysis, actually we agreed the when there is a bulk storage and when there is a premium after two to three months, then farmers usually store. So when they are going to store and the improved 
uh, historic practices are important, but they are facing, you know, the, all the technology has a cost. Usually the higher cost than the traditional one. The lack of awareness among the farmers, especially the small rural farmers, then, uh, you know, when this stories, especially the facts are there, so it is very difficult to scrap up, learn some of this space, unavailability, rats and donuts, uh, insects, and high importance of these technologies in the country. And there is a, when there is a mass, actually, a storage, the bulk storage, there is a management and recycling of these services facts are really a problem. So we came up with some of these solutions. And the technology cost is higher, so the government policy is needed to produce some, uh, give some subsidies, especially for 30 to 50 percent subsidy from the corporate side, or the capacity building program from the public sector and the private sector and the companies, and then the reduction of tariffs. It is a one of the important factor to reduce the tariff uh, for the government side, from the policy side, and uh, uh, then then there are some community level stories is actually really have to go to get some of these incentives to the farmers and the community community level stories is also encouraged. Then the interventions that is research and um, in from the institutional levels and development are needed so that can be given by the public sector as well as the <coughs> private sector. Even the companies can come forward and uh, give some of the funds for actually research and institution. Another major area is to building the awareness and capacity of the smallholder farmers will be using this improved technology. So capacity building is very important. How to use this technology and the awareness, what are the benefits, that sort of capacity building is needed. And then the dissemination of the technology is very important, especially from the initially from the public sector, there needs to be some of the steps, but at the same time, the companies and the private sector can actually do a lot, of, particularly in this research. Again, when there is the intervention, either from the research institute, from the public and private institutional companies, they need some services, especially for R&D. Actually, the public fund is needed for this R&D, as well as the partner developing partners fund is actually needed, needed and some of the Technical help is sometimes is needed, some of the technical, especially the technology and the technical, that is how to use this technology. That's also actually uh, provided is needed. And, uh, and uh, we need to some private industries input, particularly at this particular stage for the research development and dissemination. That's actually needed for uh, actually sustaining this improved modern technology at this moment of atmosphere. So thank you, sir. It's very difficult to actually finish in I know, I know. That's why you are the chairperson for this group. It's a difficult task. Avinash. So I I was uh, I was the scribe for a group that you can call a high powered committee. Uh, because there are like two secretaries and two regional directors. And the result is uh, is a Urdu cocktail, actually one line. So there are more answers than the questions that were, that were posed to us, but I would just list in no order of importance. Uh, some of the uh, recommendations uh, or thoughts were kind of radical. So first thing is if our theme was uh, reducing wastage in the public distribution of grains that, that we have in, on a huge scale in India and a small scale in Bangladesh. Uh, so the first was like why have public distribution? Why not, like, if you want to reduce wastage, first of all, reduce the amount of grains that FCI is storing and, and distributing. Right now, FCI has a stock of 74 million tons. Buffer stock norms for India are 41 million tons. It can easily be reduced. If you reduce the total amount that you're handling, uh, the losses would also go down. Uh, for that, you have to then shift the public distribution system in India, and you can move to uh, direct cash transfer. The time is right to move to that, especially in uh, urban areas, metropolitan areas and in states where uh, you have rice wheat surplus. Uh, the third idea which this year's budget also brought up is storage. So FCI has around 13, 14 million uh, tons storage capacity which has plenty and covered. It handles 74 million tons, so you need to get into uh, public-private partnership. This year's budget, so India's total capacity is around 162 million tons. This year's budget sets a target for 200 million tons. Uh, so it encourages, the budget encourages uh, public-private partnership, but does two things, through NABARD and uh, with some involvement of SHGs. 
Uh, Aaron Brook thought that both are bad ideas. The whole goal is good, but the channels that we are picking up uh, may not be the other thing. Some more suggestions is they uh, split FCI into four FCIs and do other splittings too. This is a uh, recommendation that earlier also came when Shantaram committee was, uh, Shanta Kumar committee was uh, set up. Some of the minor ones were in India when uh, Paris is procured, we allow 18% uh, moisture content. In Bangladesh, that number is around 14%. So to decide based on seasonality and other things and the storage mechanisms we have, what's the optimal, why do we need 18%? Why can't it be lower or higher depending on some scientific assessment, uh, etc. The other thing is, again, Bangladesh does it on a smaller scale, but we have millers directly procuring from farmers. In India, the government or FCI procures uh, from farmers and then uh, moves it to millers. This was done mainly to uh, deal with the problems of payment. Now we have payment platforms, so maybe we can also let procurement be handled directly by uh, millers. It will reduce cost and inefficiencies. Uh, uh, one problem that we have in moving to uh, fancier bags or better bags is both in Bangladesh and uh, India there are acts or laws which require jute bags to be used uh, for, for grain storage for public. Uh, uh, the last thing that we discussed is a slight deviation. We are talking about food quality. So uh, both uh, midday meal scheme, ICDS and public distribution system are huge channels through which we were discussing could we use them. Uh, to deliver biofortified or fortified foods and what would be needed uh, to do that. Uh, so for example, in India right now, the ICDS and midday meal schemes in school, FCI, they get their grains from FCI. Maybe we can um, delink it and allow local procurement and then maybe run some pilots to see if it works. Also introduce millets and other uh, nutrition-rich foods and see what kind of storage or quality preservation mechanisms uh, would be required. So, yeah, that's, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, greater use. And what was great is we had a, a, two representatives of, of folks that are actually helping manufacture and distribute uh, hermetically, hermetic bags and so have a great amount of experience in terms of barriers that they were facing. So the first thing we did was just identify some of, some of those barriers. What, some of them we've heard from earlier today were things like the regulatory environment. Um, Questions around information of the benefit that there's a sense that, that farmers are, don't fully understand the full set of benefits, and we talked about both benefits in terms of uh, financial benefits, but also in terms of health. Uh, we also talked about issues around credit, lack of credit, access to credit, which of course reduces the demand for storage in general. If farmers have to sell a rated harvest to pay off their creditors, and so is there, uh, that that's also that reduces the demand for improved storage. Price. We talked, spent a bunch of time talking about the fact that these bags aren't particularly cheap, and so then said, so how do we get make them affordable for farmers? And then, then we had a, a really interesting conversation for me around the distribution system of the bags. This is something I haven't spent nearly enough time thinking about. Then we talked a bit about some solutions. So, for in terms of regulatory environment uh, questions, one of them again we already was mentioned earlier is this question about can we have common standards, can we create a system where if, if a bag gets certified uh, at, at one level of government that it's certified, that there's an agreement for that that's then certified in other areas. So you don't have to kind of go through separate certifications at each kind of level of government. Um, there's this, in terms of questions of uh, trying to improve the information around the benefits, there's a, we, there was discussion of can we use existing institutional, uh, especially local institutions, to help get information out there. And this is particularly when we're talking about health information. Like, are there is there um, sort of local health communities, etc., um, health officers, workers that, that we could actually start informing people about the health benefits uh, in, or, in, in health concerns around aflatoxin and ways to, to deal with that, and that could sort of help boost demand, both for storing for grains for home consumption, but also for, for uh, from consumers. Also talked about um, how, you know, barriers around credit, again, using existing organizations, of whether they be microfinance <coughs> institutions, whether there's a way of sort of um, facilitating using warehouse receipt, where, warehousing receipt systems for as loan guarantees and, and maybe with some kind of government backup uh, for those guarantees. In terms of price, um, in trying to deal with price, there was a sense that maybe one of the first things to do is try and target consumers that have high willingness to pay. And whether that's sort of uh, 
whether that's poultry, feed processors, uh, or, or others, and try to link them directly with farmers and with, with particularly things maybe like uh, FPOs or other uh, co-ops, basically farmers at an aggregate level, which could also help deal with the distribution problem. Because one of the, sounds like one of the thorniest issues is really the, sort of the last mile of the distribution problem in terms of you can get, you know, 250, bundle of 250 bags out there, but getting one bag out to each farmer out there it gets very expensive. Uh, I'll keep it really short. So our group, we had a good mix of both uh, private sector with manufacturers, distributors, <coughs> as well as NGO representation. And in no particular order, here are some of the four key points that were brought about in our group. The first thing is that the focus should be on hermetic storage, not necessarily on bags, because they were never created to be bags in terms of uh, you know grain storage or everyday grain storage. It was created specifically to source to store seeds. So, sort of thinking it, thinking of our uh, our topic of discussion more broadly as hermetic storage is a point that was brought about. The second point that was brought about, which is similar to what uh, Dr. Bayless's group also spoke about, was this idea of aggregation, especially within uh, farming associations. So, like, um, we, you know, somebody in our group really mentioned this idea of farming as a business, because so often we've stuck on smallholder farming as something that is necessary to, as a survival livelihood opportunity, which is true. But how do we take it to the next level of farming as business? And a big part of it is, you know, creating. Uh, it, it comes to making money, and it's you know, really having advantage with economies of scale. So uh, one of the interventions that was proposed was this idea of a pilot concept with farmer groups or farmer associations, where they're provided with inputs and extension, and there's a central storage facility where, you know, once harvest happens, like 50%, uh, I mean, they give, you know, 70% of their grain to the central storage facility, and they immediately get 50% of the current market value when they put their grains in that storage facility. And then the aggregator sells a stored grain at a premium price at a later point of time, and the profits, again, come back to the farmers. So that was a very interesting intervention, especially the idea of a pilot or concept that was um, suggested by Mr. Tom uh, De Bruyne from Safe Grain. No, Grain Drop, sorry, I just gave your competitor the, <laughs> the marketing. But anyway, so the third point that was mentioned was um, extension. Uh, the necessity that, you know, education and extension plays such a huge role in an adoption of a new technology. And, you know, we heard that until about 2017, this really wasn't as big of, hermetic storage wasn't really as widely known even in India. So, with it being such a new technology in many ways, uh, it is important for education and extension, not just at the farmer level, but at every single level um, that needs to happen. And one of the, tech, uh, one of the assessment tools, uh, mentioned by Post Harvest Education Foundation was com uh, commodity, assess commodity system assessment methodology where it's targeted extension. And the final point that was brought about in our group was um, that the government should move out completely from storing grains and their function should be completely regulatory. So um, with that, that was our discussion. Thank you. If you're a large group. <laughs> Well, what we will do is, if you have a comment or a question to any of the group leaders, or uh, anybody in the group feels that something has been left out, we can raise that sir. now. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so after the interaction and a lot of uh, question and answers, uh, there have been a lot of people talking about negatives of the bags and the uh, storage, lot of people have been talking about the good things. So we need to think that do we really need this technology? I mean, does it really benefit? If we really go back and ask ourselves, there have been many, many success stories and there have been many, many farmers who are actually getting the benefits out of this technology, right? So, uh, I mean, we need to come conclude or reach to a uh, common goal that we have to accept somewhere that yes whatever we are talking about storage yes storage is important and yes hermetic technology is really making an impact but there have been challenges in the past because this technology has been new I mean I don't remember there has been any uh, so strong uh, and um, I mean with intellectually high profile people coming together and discussing about this technology together right so 
definitely there has been awareness which has gone up. I myself have spent around more than 11 years in hermetic technology and I have seen uh, the consumption of the solutions in hermetic technology going up. So definitely we need to come to a conclusion that yes, this technology is required but there needs some improvement. Thank you. They're all exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you see something? Sure, I can make a... Okay. Uh, very rich set of discussion. What I'll do, I'll try to pick some of the good points, the points that I like. This is all personal opinion at this point, as a co-chair. And I'll take some good points, and I'll also some points that I'll be critical of. So starting from the farm level storage, I'm very critical of the idea that we have to give subsidies to the farmers to, to promote our value. 30 to 50% proposal? I don't know. We need to understand what the rationale for subsidies are before going into that direction. But I like the idea that you have discussed the community level storage. If that system works, that's an institutional innovation, that can contribute to the adoption as well as sustainability of the system. So I like that idea. Um, Avinash, this, some conversation is going on for many years, right? When it comes to public distribution system, how public distribution can use hermetic bag or the new technologies. Uh, that's a question that has been going on for many years, but there are opportunities now. Opportunities is the point that you pointed out. Now, government is now willing to foster private-public partnership. That's the good news. That's actually the good news. Same thing is happening in Bangladesh. They're trying to promote similar kind of thing at the community level of storage, which is a good idea. We have to move out of the traditional model of procuring, piling up, and dumping to the market. So that's a, that's a good idea. Um, coming to market information system that KT talked about, I think that comes to right into the points that Ashok made at the beginning. We need to communicate. If it is profitable, if it is cost effective, people should know, they will adopt it. <coughs> so how do we build a community to communicate effectively to the farmer? I think that's the challenge we have to face. We'll have to work on it, and we'll talk about it later. Maria, I'll take the only good point. One good point from you is that government should get out of this. They should form the regulatory role, not the stocking role. I think that's a good point. But that point has been there in the conversation for some time. But Let's take the opportunity to create a momentum so that it, you see some tangible benefit. I will stop there and pass it on to Secretary Anand Kumar to conclude. Okay, half the job done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, I want to I want to uh, talk about a small uh, thing that many people don't know about, especially those who live in Delhi, about how. To how do you rationalize the subsidy? It's a very difficult question. Uh, and I, the example I'm giving you is, uh, is from the dairy sector. Now, when Mother Dairy started distributing milk in Delhi, the franchisee had all the incentives to switch off power when he goes home at night. Because he saves on the electricity bill. And in the morning, you have milk that is spoiled and that used to be a burden on the mother dairy because the fault always used to come back to the mother dairy. So what we did was, and this is Dr. Varghese Kurian's ingenuity, he said we will pay the electricity bill of the small vending kiosk. Um, so he has no incentive to switch off because anyway the bill is paid by the mother dairy themselves. So that's one way of giving a subsidy without actually calling it a percentage of anything. What is it that you want to achieve and measure it exactly and give that money? So I'm just giving that example because this is not very well known in, in academic circles. These are managerial tricks that you, you use to run a show. On that note that you mentioned, I, I think there has not been much uh, discussion about whether this technology should be accepted or not. I think what's being done is looking at the technology from a usability point of view of the farmer. And there are some issues there which the practices of farmers probably 
changing them may not be easy because there are constraints and we need to look at those as uh, problems which need a solution. Uh, it could be a managerial solution, it could be uh, a technology solution, it could be uh, another solution. Uh, and I go back to Ashok's point in the morning about cost benefit ratio. Uh, I think it's an extremely important thing, but having worked with farmers, for him the cost benefit ratio is when he finds extra rupees in his pocket. So unless he sees that, whatever ratio we tell him, any awareness, any information is not going to work. Because um, unless somebody says, you know, aflatoxin has a negative premium and we will not buy that good, we will reject it, uh, it doesn't matter to him that we talk about aflatoxin. So, uh, there, uh, there is one small thing that I, I thought would happen is my take on the next 10 years, and you can't question me because I may not be, I may not be there after 10 years, is that the whole food industry is going to undergo a change. A lot more localized, specialized, and when I say specialized, it could be pesticide free, it could be organic, it could be, uh, you know, high fiber, it, it could be many of those range, uh, free range chicken, um, no antibiotic eggs, you can, you can take any number of them. These kind of industries are going to come. And if they're going to come, the entire supply chain is going to be driven by, by a food safety value chain as well. If that is going to really be the business model, then there will be a value capture by farmers if you have a, a, a technology which stores, handles more scientifically and with less loss. And as somebody did point out, in India, uh, the loss in quantity is something that everybody calculates. But the loss in quality, which then becomes a loss in value for the farmer, is a bigger loss. And that's where I think we, we probably have to take that uh, narrative. Of course, I won't comment very much on what Avinash uh, has said because this is, uh, I think, uh, me and Ashok and all of us have been writing about how to reform the FCI and the public distribution system. Uh, I think we are still at it like a woodpecker, one day the tree will fall. <laughs> <laughs> but on jute bags, yes, I, I know the background of that uh, legislation. Uh, it was done in 1987. And very interestingly, it had an expiry date of 15 years, which many people don't know. But in the law, the law department said we can't have an expiry date in a legislation, which I still don't agree with. They could have put that down. I believe that every regulation should have an expiry date. And that's something I firmly believe in. So the way to get out of that is uh, the PPP model. Should FCI be owning, holding and handling everything that they said? And that question needs to be answered, particularly in the context of the fact that the food, food subsidy is off budget and doesn't get into the fiscal deficit calculation. So I think there are bigger issues there, we could probably argue that out. The common standards and a testing protocol I think is a very valid point. Uh, I think that solves a larger number of problems for, for companies. Uh, again, on the warehouse receipt system, uh, this is again one law that I'm responsible for. It is not really taken off. Uh, I think it's, it's important from a farmer's point of view. And that's where I think we can bring in new forms of storage. Uh, even this kind of a regulation that you must store it in a particular kind of a container. Uh, and then push it forward effectively through regulated warehouses. This is one area where I think we can work through in bringing uh, new technology. And of course, the aggregator's point is well taken <laughs> by almost all groups. I think the best way to approach farmers is through FPOs or farmers associations or farmers groups, whatever they may, they may uh, because volumes are important in this business. I think uh, looking at very small volumes and then trying to make a business model out of it is probably not a good start. So let's, let's take that. And I, I do agree uh, with that point that let's talk about hermetic storage than just hermetic bags. So that might change the conversation a bit. But I think it's worth doing it from a larger logistics business uh, perspective. I suppose I've covered most of the important points and um, well, extension education, uh, a very good concept, but uh, I, I knowing 
the current state of extension of agriculture in the country, I am slightly uh, hesitant to push it purely in the government sector. So I think we, uh, we have to use uh, modern methods of making people aware. And the moment uh, the businesses shifts to a cluster-based, identified farmer purchase model, which is the milk model basically, that you know the farmer, you know what you're getting, you're buying from him, I think extension becomes very easy because what then happens is for a better product you are giving a better price and then extension is very simple, then it, it really listens to, uh, listens to what you are saying. And we have seen that uh, with most of the milk cooperatives and even with companies like Nestle uh, in Moga in Punjab. And of course uh, the most interesting uh, thing about uh, the development that we don't often hear about is the poultry. The poultry revolution in India, which is as big as the milk revolution, was driven entirely by two major private companies. Now, of course, there are more of them. Uh, and it's, it's a very interesting value chain with a decentralized production and a, a kind of centralized supply of uh, genetic material and feed and medicines and even veterinary services. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting model that we probably need to look at. Uh, so, one way of looking at the next baby steps for this particular subject is should we leave out the public distribution system and that angle and look at the rest of the market where there is a value capture for better value grains and better produced grains. Is that the way forward? This is a question that I would leave for you to debate but I would think that if you can demonstrate somewhere that that's going to work and, and then there are clusters of farmers who are willing to produce a higher quality and I would think that a better post harvest actually starts with a better pre harvest. So therefore uh, can we take that supply chain into a better value chain where the value capture by farmer is seen as higher and then immediately things will work around and then we can sort of attack continuously attack policy uh, options like woodpeckers do and one day the tree will fall. Thank you. Thank you.